John Corbett alive on South Beach. Welcome to another episode of Alive on South Beach. I'm Stuart Stewart. I'm Dina Stewart. And this is a show that has a little bit of this and a little bit of that. The first thing I'd like to do is give a shout out to Cafe Prima Pasta oh, yeah. on 71st Street and North Beach. Just down the street from the Byron Carlisle Theater. The food was fabulous. We went specifically because on Tuesday nights they have a special vegetarian menu. And, and on Tuesdays we happen to be vegetarians, so it was a perfect fit. The food was really great, the service was great, the people were great. It was a good experience. So check it out. They have great Italian food every day of the week, but all the veggie vegetarians out there, check out Tuesday nights. And thank you, Prima Pasta. Cafe Prima Pasta. Cafe Prima Pasta. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have referred to South Beach as sort of a comic book come to life. And the lady we're about to introduce has been spending all of her time making South Beach into a comic book. This is Brigitte Andretti, and she is world famous on Miami Beach as Bibi, and she has a lot of friends. Yes. So tell us all about Bibi and her friends. Well, The Adventures, actually, of Bibi and Friends uh, is a comic book that I have been doing for the past 13 years here in South Beach. And uh, it's an advertising comic book, basically. It's comics through advertising and it's all about us. It was a way for me to, to have fun and also to, um, besides having a business, to advertise uh, businesses here in Miami, but also my friends, because all, I, I have very cool friends like you. Thank and you. we all do wonderful things. And, uh, and I needed a way to put that out there. Well, you've always been involved in the beauty industry. Yes, when okay. did you first realize that this is where I belong? When I was a kid. And Literally, when I was a kid, I just, I just had style. Okay. I, you know, I just, there were things that I just seemed to be skilled at that I knew that I would do. And, uh, like what? Well, I started modeling when I was a teenager. Uh, and I graduated from Fashion Institute of Technology, and that just changed my whole world. And I became one of the largest hair and makeup agent, agents in, in New York. And how, how did you get drawn to South Beach? I came <coughs> for a week, and I have to say that first week, all the people that I knew then, I still know now. I met the majority of my friends the first week I came on vacation. That's the strange thing about South Beach. The same thing happened yeah, with date? us. We came down by we're accident. All still here. We came. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When did you realize that South Beach was really like living in a comic book? Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. It was very I mean, it, to be the age that I was that young and, and sort of feel like you're retired. I mean, when I got here, <laughs> I mean that. Remember, we didn't have cell phones back then when we first got here. Everybody had beepers. Remember? Yeah. And you know, we would go, and I'd be with these wonderful friends, and we would go to the beach, and we'd take our our, our chairs, lounge chairs, and get a little table, and everybody would put the beeper on, and would say, "Okay, the office is open." <laughs> and I thought, "Oh, this is really for me." <laughs> What's in the future for BB? Oh, that's easy. <clears throat> BB's moving to TV. BB's doing BB TV, BB and Friends TV, and it's a combination of reality and animation. So I'm bringing the comic book to life, basically. Where can people get copies of your book? On my website, which is bbadventures.com. That's B I B I BB, by the way. Uh, and um, on Amazon here locally and the new book is called come feel the vibe so come feel the vibe with BB and remember where BB goes the world follows hi I'm Sharif Malik and I'm alive in South Beach while walking along Lincoln Road we happen to look into the window of the art center and there was this artist sitting there playing with wire and this was definitely a wired artist. What are you doing here? Well, that, uh, that, that is a very good question. Uh, at a certain point, I think it's, uh, it's changed a lot from what it was in the beginning. 
what was it supposed to be? Well, I, I wanted to, uh, to express myself. I want to express the love and admiration uh, that I had for someone in particular. Uh -huh. And um, then it started meandering a little bit. It started to talk about uh, different themes uh, that, ha that love uh, that love has, which is you know, mm -hmm. lust, and it has pain, and it has, uh, I think, growth, which is the main thing. So I try to, actually, this is, a, I, you know, I think what I'm writing here is something about growth, I feel. How did you get into doing this in the first place? You mean with the wire? Yeah, or with the uh, wire, and, and, and forming the letters, and it's so fascinating to well, thank try you. to read it. Yeah, you know, everything that I do, there is this um, evolutionary growth in my artwork. It's always uh, creating something and there's a tangent of an idea um, that spawns something else, you know. And uh, so it just keeps growing. And so this uh, wire comes from two sources, really. Um, it's very brief. Uh, I was fortunate to be, acquainted, uh, to be acquainted with a woman, Adriana Carvalho. She's a great artist and I've known her for many, many years. And she works in metal. And she had uh, created a little tiny flower made out of telephone wire. And she put it on the wall. And I looked at that, I said, how cute that is, you know? And I said, well, yeah, let me see what I can do. And there was some mm -hmm. wire lying around, and I started bending it. And I just love the feel of bending wire, you know? And it just, it just fit my personality, right? But fast forward, what I realized while I'm doing this is that I'm a very impatient person. And this really satisfies that aspect of my, of my, my creative life, that I can, I can make art rather easily. It's mostly ideas, but for me, bending it comes rather naturally. And where can people see some of your other art? Because I'm sure you, you do some other things too. Yeah, I do figurative work. I do a lot of different types of pieces. Uh, and you're here at the South Florida Art Center, or now it's Art Center South Florida. Yeah, yeah, upstairs. I have a studio upstairs, yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about this gentleman here, who's very fascinating, come down to the Art Center and say hello. HIV AIDS has gone from being an epidemic to a pandemic to a chronic illness and now there might even be a vaccine to prevent it. We went to an event this week that starts here on Miami Beach and will end in Washington DC for the National Conference on AIDS. And it's, it's an 1800 mile bike run that's going to make stops along the way. And while they were here, we got to speak to some of the people who were involved in the project, and this is what they had to say. Uh, tell me, what does AMFAR stand for? Well, AMFAR is the foundation for AIDS research. We're one of the oldest AIDS organizations in America. We've been, we were really founded in 86, although our roots go back even further than that. And throughout our history, we've been funding biomedical research and issues on public policy and human rights for people with HIV. When AIDS was first discovered, it was like a death sentence. And we lost a lot of friends who lived here on South Beach. And it was really sad, but it's no longer that situation. I know now it's being controlled, but do you ever think at some point it'll be eradicated? I actually have no doubt that it'll be eradicated. I, I can say that without hesitation. Um, we, we have made phenomenal progress in AIDS research over the last 25 years. I mean, unlike any other disease in history, the research has progressed really incredibly to the point now where more than 60% of all of our investments at AMFAR are focused on a cure because not only do we believe we can cure this disease, but we actually believe we can do it in our lifetime. What's the connection between Kiehl's and AMFAR and this uh, event? So Kiehl's has been supporting AIDS charities for the past 30 plus years. We were really there once the epidemic was at its full blown in the early 80s and have raised over $2 million over the past two decades. We support AMFAR because AMFAR's basic mission is that they are raising money to find, to fund research grants that are looking for a vaccine and a cure for AIDS. And we think that you need both to really get out of this epidemic. So we believe this is who we want to support. So this is our third annual life ride. It's a motorcycle ride starting from Miami. It'll end in DC, where the World's AIDS Conference will be held for the first time in 18 years. So it's a great moment. I'm standing here with John Corbett. And if you remember Sex in the City, Northern Exposure, this is the man who made those shows so good. Tell me, why are you here today? Well, we're raising some money for uh, 
HIV and AIDS, and we're working with AMFAR and out for a 1,800-mile motorcycle ride all the way to D.C. <laughs> Go ahead. In keeping with silly season, we went to a silly event. This is it. <laughs> this event is really great. I know, everybody seems to be having a really great time. Because this is one of those events that, you know what the event is really all about? Oh yes, it's a promotion for the salon, I guess, and they also have a plastic surgeon, they had a priv uh, private trainer, and they have a fantastic catering company. Uh -huh. Really the best, in all the events I go, it is the best uh, little appetizers I ever tried. It was fresh and light. I arrived with my hair down and I arrived with a girlfriend who decided that she's going to play the hairdresser. And she started, but it was... Uh, and then a guy came and in two minutes he did that. <laughs> so that's not bad, huh? I think no, that's, I people here. that's great. And on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate this? I would put an eight for this. What do you think of this event tonight? Wonderful, a, a, a great turnout, nice people, good food, uh, the, uh, I like the drinks, very well mixed. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this one? Um, I, I, I'd like to give it a, say, a 9. Do you know what the event is all about? It's a beauty mixer. Do you know what the event is for? It's a beauty block party, that's what the flyer said. <laughs> so let's go with that. Okay, that, sound, that sounds like a plan. And how did you ladies come to work this event tonight? Well, we're working the door because we are both models at Next Model Management, which is right next door, so we're greeting people tonight for the event. And do you work a lot of events like this? Oh, of course. We do all promo gigs and other gigs as well. And what's the best event you ever work? Um, well, this is probably one of the best ones just because it has a lot of really good people and clients here, so we've been able to mingle and meet some people, which is really nice. What about you? What's the best event you ever worked at? I would have to agree because everyone's so sweet here. How did you hear about this event? Well, I didn't just hear. I just caught the just call. Right call right. So Sean said, come in. And what do you think of this event? Well, I really just it's Very good. Yeah. It's got very a lot busy. of atmosphere, very busy, you know. And it's a good promotion for what everybody's promoting. Do you go to the clubs at night? Not really, no. Because we unfortunately... We used to go to a lot of clubs. We used to. Yeah. We were very good dancers. Which, which, club, which clubs did you go to? In England. Oh, uh, oh I mean George. here. No, here. That's the trouble. There's no clubs for older people. Yeah, yeah, they're all very for, young. Not for our age. There are any clubs for well, very young When we go on a cruise, we dance. Uh-huh. What I'm saying, there's no clubs for middle age. Yeah, there's no place where you can dance here. No, that's what I'm saying. There's no, unless you want to dance with teenagers or she kids. She wants to dance, my wife. What's the dance? That's, what, that's what's wrong with South Beach and Miami. Yeah. There's not enough for sort of middle aged, you know, people. That's what we feel anyway. Well, you know, the middle aged people here all started out young. They did, the middle aged people that you see here all started out young on South Beach. <laughs> you know, this, this, is, this is how we all end up. It's a good way to end up, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I guess that brings us to the end of another episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. I'm Stuart Stewart. I'm Dina Stewart. And we're alive on South Beach with a little bit of this and a little bit of that for syndicatednews.net.